Hey guys, in this video we're going to be explaining strong backs in the floor truss. We're going to tell you why they exist and how to install them. So a strong back is a 2x6 that we put on its side in the floor trusses. And the reason we do that is because there's some bounce in these floor trusses. And if you have this whole thing sheeted and you're living in this house, while you walk around, individual floor trusses can flex by themselves. But when we put that two by six through there, it ties all the floor trusses together. And that allows it, so not just one truss is bouncing, but all of these trusses are taking that weight. So in summary, a strong back reduces bounce in the floor truss system. Okay, so a little bit about the strong back placement. The longer the span between load bear points, the more bounce a floor truss has. So we like to shoot for anything over 13 feet that we'll put in a strong back. If we have a 20 foot run, we'll put it right in the middle between the two load bear points. If we have a 30 foot run, which is very rare, we'd put two runs so that it's 10, every 10 feet it either has a load bear point or a strong back. Um, the most we'll leave is about 13 feet without a strong back in it. So in this house, we have a few different runs running different directions around the house. The most important one is in the living room because you're gonna have a lot of people in there and we just wanna make sure that that floor doesn't bounce a lot. Before we put the board in, we're gonna mark layout, which is just 19.2 from the end. And that will allow us to line our floor trusses up when we nail this on. Okay, now we're gonna slide it in the end of this ladder truss, and we wanna go right next to this upright here. That's where we're gonna nail it on, and it is not easy to get these things in everywhere. So here we are in the living room. We have a load bear point way behind me, and we have the sill plate out in front of me behind the camera. So this is gonna be where we put our strong back line. It's about 10 feet from the low bear points. And we're gonna start on this truss here just to tie it in because it's sitting on this load bear wall right here. So we'll flush up this side right here and that'll set us up on our measurements going through. We wanna put three nails in on each truss. Right here, we're off our mark and that's because we shifted this truss over to avoid one of the J bolts. So we're just gonna nail it where it is and move on. Okay, so right here we're at the end of our first strong back. Now this is an important detail because you want to overlap your seams at least one truss cavity. Because if you just nail to the same truss, it causes a hinge point and takes a lot of the usefulness out of your strong back. By overlapping one truss cavity, it ties them together better so that it can't hinge. Right here, since we're on the same side, we're gonna put it on top. Before we do that, we have to cut a hole through that firewall. But for seaming, you can also put them on just the other side of this board here. Okay, so let's notch through this firewall so that our strong back can fit through. Okay, so we're notched through our firewall, and now we're doing our overlap where we hit two trusses, not just one. So we'll flush it up again and keep going on our marks. Okay, so we did this entire run. We got one more little board here that we're gonna slide in from the end. Um, don't forget to overlap two trusses so that they actually are effective. If you're interested in seeing a video for every single part that goes into a house build, then subscribe to our channel to check out more.